So the last couple problems that we've done have just been projectiles being fired horizontally. Now we're going to look at projectiles that are fired at an angle. And you're going to notice a pattern, something we've seen before with forces and vector addition. Um, we're going to be breaking apart initial velocity into its components. And that's really the only difference when it comes to projectiles being fired at angles. So whenever you're given the initial velocity, so let's say you have an initial velocity of, I'm just making numbers up, 4 meters per second at 26 degrees above the horizontal. In order to find the x component, the vix will equal the vi times the cosine of the angle. So this will be 4 meters per second, cosine 26 degrees, equals 3.59, keeps on going, meters per second. And to find the y component, viy is vi times the sine of the angle. So this would be 4 meters per second times the sine of 26. So sine of 26 times 4 is 1.753, keeps on going, meters per second. So the only real difference when solving any of these problems is you're getting the x and the y components and adding those into your xy chart. To get the x component, you're taking the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle, and to get the y component, you're taking the initial velocity times the sine of the angle. So again, cosine with x, sine with y, this is the same as when we did vector addition, and also the same as when we did forces. So we'll do an example, I'll actually do two examples, uh, just solving for projectiles fired at angles, and we should be good to go. Okay, a golf ball is hit at 4.5 meters per second at a 66 degree angle. Find the total time the golf ball is in the air, the maximum height, and the distance the golf ball travels. Your diagram. You want to show the golf ball being hit, reaching a high point, and then going back to the ground. In our x direction, we have, remember, constant velocity. Our y direction, we start out fast, we get slower, come to rest at the top, and then get faster on the way down. Our given find, if you remember, is our xy chart. So xy. We know that the golf ball is hit at 4.5 meters per second at a 66 degree angle. So the golf ball's initial velocity is in this direction at a 66 degree angle. So your initial x velocity would be equal to the initial velocity times the cosine of the angle. So this is equal to 4.5 meters per second, cosine 66 degrees. The initial in the x is 1.83, keeps on going, meters per second. I usually store that number in my calculator as x, just for convenience. And we'll put this in our xy chart, vx equals 1.83. Again, you want the whole unrounded number. You don't have to show this work if you just put those right in your calculator and put these values in the xy chart. That's fine. That's usually what I look for anyway. And then for our V initial Y, you're taking 4.5 meters per second times the sine of 66 degrees. And this equals 4.11, keeps on going, meters per second. So I would store that as Y in my calculator. So VIY is 4.1, keeps on going, meters per second. We know that the Acceleration in the y is free fall acceleration, so a in the y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We know that the acceleration in the x, ax, is 0 meters per second squared, and we don't know anything else in the x. If we look at our diagram in the y direction, the golf ball is going to start on the ground and it's going to end back on the ground. The height of the t is negligible. So the golf ball starts here and ends here, which means that my total delta y is equal to zero meters. 
So now based off what we're given in the y, we have the initial acceleration and a delta y. In the x, all we know is the initial velocity, which is also the final velocity. It's going to make sense to use the vertical. So looking in the vertical, we know from start to finish, the golf ball is going to end at the same height. So in the vertical direction, again, because we're starting and ending at the same place, we know delta y is zero, and we're going to look at the whole motion. So we're looking at vertical from the time the golf ball leaves the ground until the time the golf ball hits the ground again. Given the initial in the y, acceleration, and delta y, the equation that's going to make sense to use is delta y equals 1 half a t squared plus v initial in the y, t, and this is a, y. For the whole motion, my delta y is zero. That term goes away, it makes this a little bit easier to solve. The only unknown now is t, so let's solve for t. You get negative one half a t squared equals v initial y, t. That t cancels, so t equals v initial y, over negative one-half a. So t equals my v initial y. Again, if you stored this in your calculator, it'll be a lot easier. So this is 4.1, keeps on going, meters per second, divided by negative one-half of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. My t equals 0 0.838, keeps on going, seconds. So first thing it was asking for was the time with two sig figs, delta t is approximately 0 0.84 seconds. I can't write today. This is 0 0.84 seconds. This number I would store in my calculator as t. So you should have three numbers stored, your vx as x, your vi, y as y, and now this number, your t as time. So we know time, we know v initial in the y, we know acceleration in the y, we know v in the x. The next thing it asks us for is how high it goes. So how high does the golf ball reach? We're going to still want to work in the vertical, but since we're looking for the maximum height, we only care about the time for the ball to get here. So we're looking in the vertical, but we're only looking at the up. If the ball is only going up, I know that the v final in the y is going to equal zero. Because at the top of its path in the y direction, the ball comes to rest. I know that my time to go up is equal to one half of the total time, and I already know what the acceleration and the initial are. So looking for the maximum height, I have two choices here. I can use either the no time equation or I can use the delta y equation. I'm going to choose to use the delta y equation. So delta y equals one half a t squared plus v initial y t. Because we're only looking at up, I need to make sure that my time is one half of the time that I had stored and I already know the v initial. So delta y equals, we already have all of these numbers, one half times negative 9.8 meters per second squared times one half of the time that we found in part a. So half of that time would be 0 0.41, keeps on going, seconds squared, plus my v initial, again you should have already stored this in your calculator, 4.11, keeps on going, meters per second, times 0.41 keeps on going seconds. And again, that 0.41 comes from taking one half of 0.83 unrounded seconds. So that was 0.41 keeps on going seconds. Multiplying all of this out, you'll get delta y, and again, this is for going up, so your maximum height, equal to 0.86 keeps on going meters, two sig figs, Delta y will be approximately 0 0.86 meters. 
so the golf ball is only rising about 86 centimeters. And I might just want to add that this is delta y max. So we found out the time, we found out how high the ball went. Again, delta y for the whole motion was zero because it started and ended at the same height. Last thing it's asking for is how far the ball goes. So we're looking for delta x. Any time to go into the horizontal. And the only equation we ever use in the horizontal when dealing with projectile motion is delta x equals vxt. Again, because this is constant velocity. We were given the initial velocity and the angle, so we already know vx, and we found time in part a. So now we just multiply these together. This equals 1.83, keeps on going, seconds, if you stored that, sorry, meters per second. If you stored that as x, this is a really easy calculation from your calculator. Times the time, 0 0.84, keeps on going, seconds. And this should actually be a 3, not a 4. There we go. So multiplying these two together, we get 1.53, keeps on going, meters, 2 sig figs, the golf ball goes about 1.5 meters in the x direction. So three things it was asking for. It was a longer problem only because of all that it was asking for. The only difference again between this and the previous problems we were doing is that you have to find the initial x and y velocities. In other words, any time it's being shot at an angle, you're not going to have a v initial of zero in the y direction. So you, your old problems had only an x velocity initially, but now we've got an x and an initial y velocity. I'm going to do one more example. In this case, the projectile is being shot down at an angle. If you feel like you're okay and you don't want to see it, that's fine. It's a little bit different, just adding a negative sign. Um, so if you don't want to see it, you can stop now. If you do want to see it, keep on watching. Okay, second example. The tennis ball is thrown out a window 28 meters above the ground at an initial velocity of 15 meters per second, 20 degrees below the horizontal. How far does the ball move horizontally before it hits the ground? So if we draw our diagram, we've got a window the tennis ball is being thrown out of, and it's being thrown down at an angle of 20, sorry, yeah, 20 degrees. So speed lines... They're going to look like this, constant in the x, getting faster in the y. x, y chart. We know that the delta y is negative 28 meters because the ball is falling down 28 meters. So delta y is negative 28 meters. We know that the initial velocity in the x is just 15 cosine 20 degrees. So vx is equal to 14.09, keeps on going, meters per second. Again, store that number as x. We know that the initial y velocity, viy, is just 15 meters per second, sine of 20 degrees. So that's 5.13, keeps on going, meters per second. However, because it's being thrown down, it's being thrown to the right and down, we need to make this negative. So that's where this becomes a little bit different. So you need to recognize based on the direction, left, right, up, down, what's positive and what's negative in terms of the x and y velocity. The way I drew my diagram, it's moving to the right, that's why x is positive, but it tells us that it's being thrown below the horizontal, which means that my y has to be negative. Everything else after that little negative sign that we add in is the same. So our acceleration in the y is still in free fall, so negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the acceleration in the x is still 0 meters per second squared. We're looking for how far the ball moves horizontally before it hits the ground, so what we're looking for is delta x. Given the delta y, the initial velocity, and the acceleration, it's going to make sense to work in the vertical first because given those three things, I can find time. So using our delta y equals 1 half a y delta t squared plus v initial y delta t, we can figure out what time is. We know delta y, we know a, we know v initial y, so this becomes quadratic. So 
1 half ay t squared plus v initial y t minus delta y equals 0. 1 half of negative 9.8 meters per second squared t squared plus my negative 5.13 keeps on going meters per second t minus a negative 28 meters equals 0. Cleaning this up a little bit, we get negative 4.9 meters per second squared t squared minus 5.13 keeps on going meters per second t plus 28 meters equals 0. You should still have the quadratic formula program in your calculator. So this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. Putting that into the calculator, the only answer that's going to make sense is T equaling 1.92 keeps on going seconds. So one note about storing these numbers. If you store this number as Y in your calculator, when you go to enter it in the program, you can just type the letter Y instead of having to remember what that whole number was. So you would do negative 4.9. If you stored this as Y, Y, and then positive 28, it'll work out. You can't store anything as A, B, or C in the calculator because it'll automatically overwrite those when you use the program. So that's why I suggest using X and Y for those X and Y velocities. Uh, again, the only downside of using the quadratic formula program is that you can't store this number, and you do want to actually write down what that whole number is. So once we have the time, we can move into the horizontal because we already know the initial or and final x velocity because it's constant. So delta x is just equal to the x velocity times time. So this is my unrounded number, 14.09, keeps on going, meters per second. Again, helpful if you stored that as x, times my unrounded time, 1.92, keeps on going seconds. Multiplying those together, we get 27.11, keeps on going meters. So how far does the tennis ball go? Two sig figs, about 27 meters. So the only trick for this problem was making sure that we made the initial y velocity negative because it was being thrown down. Otherwise, same steps in terms of every other projectile motion problem we've been doing.